What's up you guys, Westside here, and today I'm going to be building the Analog Slam Squirt for you guys. Lots of you requested build videos from me, so without further ado, here is the Analog version of the Slam Squirt. I will have a follow-up video with the Vista Slam Squirt build, and also an Air Unit Slam Squirt build, so keep an eye out for those coming soon. Alright, let's get started. So everything you see here are the parts you need to build a Slam Squirt. We got our frame, ducts, motors, VTX, stack, camera, receiver, prints, skids, screws, standoffs, all the goodies. First thing I do is put the motors on. This one's going to be a 4S build, so we are using the 3300 KV. If this was a 6S build, we'd be using the 2800 KV. And I have 7mm and 6mm screws I use. First we want to get some Loctite, we'll get something to put it in, right now we'll just use this little baggie. And Loctite melts plastic so I don't put it directly on the screw because it's going to touch the skid. So what I do, I take the tip of a little screwdriver, get my motors in one hand and just dab on the, right there. And we'll take our 6mm. Those will be for the inside screw holes, just so they don't touch the stator on the motor wire. You just want to get them started at first and don't tighten them all the way down until you get the other ones going. We'll grab our 7mm screw. And now you can get them nice and tight. And we do that to all four. Okay, next I put the stack on, so let's get that out. And for this, we're going to be using the Mamba MK3.5. And Dytone provides these little 20x20 20 20 stack adapters. It's made so you can use these tiny screws in the M3 holes. And for the analog build, we put the stack right at the center. We will screw these through the bottom plate into this little metal adapter plate. And then we will take the stack off this little plate it comes on. This hole right here is the back. It's made for the air unit. So our ESC wires are going to go towards the back. And now we're going to solder the XT60 lead on. So let's heat up our soldering iron. I will just be using a TS100. Also while we're waiting for that to heat up we'll unbox the rest of our components and go over what they are. So all the drone co squirts get Predator V5s. The micro full cased. For our VTX, we're going to be using a TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano. And for our receiver, we're going to be using an FR Sky RXSR. This process of wiring up the receiver will be the same with Crossfire. This customer just ordered FR Sky. Our soldering iron's hot, so now let's pre tin our positive and negative pads. Put the solder on the pad, put the soldering iron on that, and then just kind of move it around. Now I have my soldering iron turned up all the way to 400. I would rather have it hot and you only touch it for two seconds than if you have it half as hot and you're holding it there for a minute. That's how you lift pads. And while we're pre-tinning these, we're going to go ahead and pre-tin the ESC pads. Again, just real quick. You can rotate the quad to make it easier for you to work. You want to make sure to clean your tip always when you're soldering. It definitely helps. We'll set this down, careful not to burn yourself. We're going to pre-tin the ends of our wires, starting with our XT60 lead. And again, like I said, these are pre-measured. I know that it's going to fit there and there, because they come out the side. So you pre-tin your wires. You want it to really melt in there. If you have excess on your tip, go ahead and just clean that right off. And then we'll put a nice little blob of fresh solder, and we won't heat it up too much. What this is going to do is it's going to keep the flux around for when we need it. Same thing, we're going to put another little just real quick, real quick. And now we're going to heat up the pad, bring in the wire, move the soldering iron above the wire, hold it there, and let it cool, and you have a shiny solder joint. And before we put the black one down, since it's going to be covering the positive pad, I take this time to get two wires 
for my capacitor. I like to run a capacitor on every build. So we're going to pre-tin this wire. And we don't need that much on there, so we're going to nip some of that off. Now I'm cleaning my tip again. Again, I'm adding a little blob so there's some flux on there. Same thing with this. And then we'll bring it in here. Now the capacitor is going to come up in front of the flight controller and ESC. So we're going to run it underneath the flight controller. And we're just going to heat up the solder, bring the wire in real nice and quick. Perfectly shiny. Then we're going to add this wire the negative for the capacitor. Again, we're going to add a little. First, we're going to clean our tip again. Add a little spot so there's some flux. Grab our ground. That's how you get shiny joints right there. Now we're going to measure our motor wires. I already know where to cut them. I usually cut them somewhere right here maybe a half an inch past the corner screw there. I'm going to go through and strip the ends of these. And we're going to bend the wires up a little bit so we can get to them to pre-tin them. Careful not to get solder blobs on your ESC while you're doing this. Some people even put electron electrical tape over it. I just am careful. Again, we're pre-tinning our wires. If you need to clean your tip halfway through, definitely do that. All right, looks like we got them all. I'm gonna get some tweezers for this next part. And we're gonna start the opposite side. I have a soldering iron. We don't wanna start over here and work this way. We're gonna start over here and work this way. So this wire right here. So I think there's a little bit of flux that could be added to here, so I'm going to take my flux pen and I'm just going to paint it right on where I'm about to solder. Flux is the thing that I didn't know I needed until I needed it. Flip it around and do this other side. And then we can put the flight controller back over the ESC. And right now we will secure our motor wires. I use electrical tape. You can use whatever you'd like. So we got our electrical tape on the bottom. We're going to bring this over. Get our motor wires nice and straight how we want them. Then bring the tape over. We're going to go two wraps and then cut off whatever will be hanging off. So we just have a little bit to secure to the bottom of the arm there, just like that. Do that to all four. And then at this point, I will secure the cap on. So we're gonna strip these two wires however long we need. I usually go about one finger length. It gives me enough room. All right, we're gonna pre-tin these wires. We're going to get our cap, and we're going to nip off everything except just a little piece so we can solder to. Now you can use, I think they have little breakout boards that you can use to do this. Uh, I've just done this so many times like this, this is how I do it. And right now I'll pull on them, make sure they're super secure. Alright, we're going to pull out the wiring diagram for this flight controller. So here's our wiring diagram. What we're going to do is we're going to pre-tint all the pads that we're going to use. So we're going to see where our, our receiver is hooked up. It's right here. Those are these pads. We're also going to remove this target sticker. We don't need that anymore. We're going to get all these ones over here, the bottom four, and then cam all these four in the center, or what the seven it is. So right here we have our four receiver wires. Up here we have our three camera wires, and then right here we have our four VTX wires. That's all we're going to be soldering to the board. So now let's solder to these pads. First we can grab our receiver. 
And this guy's going to end up being back here, so we want to leave enough room for that. Again, we're going to pretend the ends of these wires. When I have the wiring harness in my hand, I usually just go over to the soldering iron at this point, since it's already hot, and I just go like this. Rather than having an extra hand needed, let's double check the wiring diagram. And then I give the wires a little twist, keeps them all together. Keeps things looking nice. And we have enough room to bring it to the back, anywhere we need. So now let's get our VTX wires ready. So with these guys, to keep them isolated from things, I have some double stick tape. I will double it up. Cut this in half is enough to do two VTXs. And just press it right on the back of this VTX. With the UFL pointing to the back, we're going to place it right in the center of the board. We're going to leave a little slack for future in case we need to resolder in the future. And it sucks when you cut your wires short. So. Yeah, we're going to leave a little bit of room. Again, like maybe two finger lengths of wire. Come over here and pre-tin these. Again, anytime you're soldering over your flight controller and stuff, just be careful you're not dropping solder onto the flight controller. Because that will cause problems later. Ask me how I know. And then we don't need all this wire that's on the end, so we're going to about cut half of the exposed pre-tinned wire off. You don't need a lot, you just need a little bit. I don't know how long I've been, my, the brim of my hat's been cutting you guys off. I hope that's not been a thing. So far those are looking good. Now we need our camera wiring harness. Again, with this one, we don't need this current sensor because there's an onboard current sensor on the ESC. So we're just going to remove this last wire, which is pink. And then our camera's going to sit up here somewhere, so we're going to make sure we leave enough room for it, enough wire for it. Again, trim some of this off. Don't need the excess on there. All right, and that's all our soldering. Now again, we're going to just twist our wire to keep it nice and clean. Plenty of room to keep it up front. This is going to come around to the back like that. Now we can put the SMA to UFL connector on the VTX. This doesn't come with the VTX, but these are, I think, four for five bucks on Amazon or something. Seven bucks, something like that. It just presses right on. And you'll, you'll know when it sits on there. And then you can turn it if and it still stays on. So we're going to have it coming straight out the back. We also want to secure this, but we also need access to our bind button and our lights. So, Alright, so we're going to use this stuff, E6000, to secure a few things here. This is really good multi-purpose for quad-related stuff. I put it on all my UFL connections. It helps keep them from popping off, because we all know that happens. So first we're going to turn this out of the way and put some on the bottom side. We want to be careful not to cover up these LEDs or the bind button. Some underneath. And then we put some on the top. You don't need to do this, I do. No one likes their UFL popping off. Oh yeah, and we also want to cover our capacitor. I cover these little leads just to keep them from shorting out on anything. And we can plug in our camera. We can plug in our receiver. That's all the soldering. Now we're going to wait for this to dry, clean up, and get ready to put all the TPU pieces on. So while that's drying, I just want to go over the standoff situation. The stock squirt comes with six 20 mil standoffs for the ducts, and then it comes with four for the body, which here, 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 here. The slam squirt replaces the 30, let's get rid of these, with four 25s. If you bought the squirt for me, it will already come with four 25 millimeter standoffs. As well as the 25 millimeter standoffs, you are also going to need 
three 20 mil standoffs for the GoPro mount and those just slide in right here I just usually start them and then I'll use the table or something hard to push them in and then also last you'll need four eight millimeter m3 screws to mount the GoPro to the front camera mounts okay so all this is dry now we can start we'll start with this cap holder just shove that right in there we're going to take some of those motor screws that we threw off to the side earlier you got to put a little bit of backing pressure to get the screw started but once you do tighten that up do that to all four we got those on now we can put our 25 millimeter standoffs on just dump out our screws we're going to get our loctite again i like to loctite all the screws in the squirt just in case put a little bit on put it through the hole and just tighten the standoff down on it. I'll do the back ones. All the standoffs are on. Now we can take the camera mounts, put them on the front standoffs. You just slide them all the way down. They should be flush against the bottom. Then we'll take two camera screws and install the camera. There is two holes in this camera mount for the DJI cam. For the analog cam, you just use the top hole. And if the camera is a little loose, even after tightening, we can add some washers. These little washers come with most cameras, so we're just going to put this over, put this back in here, tighten it down. Camera's installed. Now we can go through and add the six standoffs around the outside. Same thing, we put a little bit of Loctite on there, screw through the hole and then stand off so you screw down onto it. And then we'll go ahead and put on the SMA and antenna tube mount. There's holes back here for the antenna tubes, but we're gonna start with the SMA. Let's push it right through. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort. It's supposed to be tight. That's what she said. Or he said. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty tight, and then we'll put our lock nut on there. Tighten that down, tighten that down. All right, so before we put the SMA mount on, we will put the receiver in here. I got this little plate screwed in, and now we're gonna use some more of this E6000 to kind of glue it down. I just like to run it right along the side here. Make sure again, we're not covering any LED lights. You don't need a ton, it just keeps it from falling out. And then we won't mess with the antennas right now. We don't want to touch them and have the receiver get messed up from the glue we just put on there. But now you can see it's really coming together. Get these wires looking a little bit neater. Put this antenna on while we're at it. Put the ducks on. They just push right on. Flip it around to the other side. This is our XT60 to strap holder. And so you can see it's shaped for the XT60. Just put it correct orientation. We just slide it right over there. And then we want the anti-slip side facing this way, away from the XT60. We'll just slide that right in there. I like to get it all the way down, right below the buckle. And then we'll put it through the top plate. Feed it back through. Now when you put the top plate in, you want to put the top first. You just put it underneath these two little tabs, push up a little bit, and push forward. And you'll see the holes line up. Then we take our four screws and just screw in the top plate. And you can kind of see these TPU pieces aren't sitting all the way up and where they should. You, you just go ahead and Shove them all the way to the top. It should all just sit right together, nice and tight. Get our GoPro mount. And these attach pretty simple. The back one just goes through that, that first single hole. So we're just going to screw that on one side. Don't tighten it all the way down because we still need to get our other screws in. Once we get one side, we can get both of the screws on that side nice and tight. And then we'll put our other ones in on the other side. 
All right, so minus the receiver wires that we're gonna um, mess with in a minute after this glue dries, it's completely done. Minus props and configuration. So that is the analog slam squirt build. All right, thank you guys for watching. Till next time, Westside out.